Welcome to Ajia.com and e-learning platform from Real-Time Signals Technologies Private Limited. Today we are going to talk about linear regression algorithm which is often used in machine learning. Say you're a property dealer and there is a house that has come up for sale. How do you fix negotiate the price of the house? You may have records of previous sales with details such as price sold for type of house, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. Total constructed area in square yards, locality information, water availability, presence of gardening area, age of the house, etc. Which of these factors influence the price sold? Can we use this information to fix the price for a new house that has come up for sale? Say you are running a marketing firm and you have a product for sale. Can you predict the demand sales for the next month? You may have information about the sales for the previous few months. Amount of investment made on the marketing campaigns, etc. Can you predict the sales using these information? Can you identify which of the marketing campaigns are effective and suggest a marketing strategy to improve the sales? Say you're a government official and your job description is to ensure the food security. Can you predict the production of food grains for the next year? You may have historic data of the amount of rains, minimum support price for a crop and crop-wise distribution of land. Can you use such information to predict the food grain availability? As a policy maker, given the predicted amount of rains for the next year, can you encourage farmers to grow one crop over the other? Regression measure similarity between an independent variable or variables such as inputs and a dependent variable like output. Regression refers to a set of statistical modeling tools devised to measure the similarity between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. Measured similarity is then used to do prediction. For example, in the house price prediction example, the price of the house is the dependent variable and the information such as the number of bedrooms, age of the house, total construction area are the independent variables. Dependent variable is a measured quantity, typically, and the independent variables generally have more physical meaning. Linear regression assumes a linear dependence between the dependent and the independent variables. Consider a scatter plot of the floor area and the price of house in our house price example. It may look like the plot below. Linear regression assumes the relation. Price equals M times floor area plus C. The constant M is the slope of the line and C denotes the intercept of the line on the price axis. Let us pose the problem mathematically. Using the variable y for the price of the house and the variable x as the floor area. We have the equation y equals mx plus c. As the model describing the relationship between our dependent and independent variables. Different values for m, c describe different lines in the xy plane. The question that arises is what values to choose for M and C. What are the best values for M and C that is, is there a criterion to pick the values for M and C? Assume Y hat equals MX plus C to be the value computed using the model description. And let Y be the actual value if known. Best can be defined as the model explaining most of the observations with respect to an error. An error must be a number with two properties, first one always positive, and second one equals zero only when matched. The criterion for the choice of M and C can be now stated as the model with smaller error on all the observed samples. The cost function for different values of M and C looks as shown on the right. There is a single point where the function has the smallest value. From the shape of the function, note that the slope of the function, or equivalently the rate of change of the function, decreases on one side of the smallest value and increases on the other side. At the minimum point, the rate of change of the function becomes zero. Mathematically we can say that the derivative of the function is zero at the minimum location. That is, the derivative is zero with respect to both the variables m and c at the location of the minimum. Let us revise some mathematical formulae. 
the derivative of x underscore square with respect to x is 2x. Derivative of a constant multiple of x is equal to that constant. Derivative of a constant which does not depend on x is 0. And derivative of a sum of different function of x is equal to the sum of the derivatives of individual functions. This is because derivative is a linear operation. Now consider the derivative of our cost function with respect to the variable c. The equations are a result of the chain rule. First line uses the linearity property. Second line uses the derivative of a square. And third line uses the derivative of constant properties. Equating the derivative to zero gives us an expression for c. However the expression depends on m also. Subscripting c back in the expression for the cost function reduces the cost as a function of m only, taking the derivative of the modified cost function with respect to m and finally equating it to zero gives the final expression for m. Let us summarize the algorithm for linear regression. We will be given a set of input-output pairs, x, y. First we compute the expression for m and c as given in the equations. Now for a new input, we can use the computed m and c values to get the required prediction for output. We note here that the expression for m is composed of the cross covariance of the variable x and y in the numerator and the variance of x in the denominator. In a sense m measures the normalized cross covariance between the variable x and y. Here is a Python code snippet detailing the steps involved in linear regression estimation. First the averages of x and y are computed. Then covariance and variance are computed which are divided to get the value of m. The value of m is then used to compute c. In the previous slides, we saw that the variable c depends only on the average values of y and x. So if we make the average values of our observation to zero by subtracting the mean, c will be equal to zero, hence one variable less to compute. Another computational trick is to stack the variables m and c as a single vector, and make a vector of input by appending one. The equivalent of variance for the vector variables is the correlation matrix. Similarly the cross covariance can be replaced by the cross covariance vector. The equivalent of the division for single variable case is the matrix inversion, which gives the expression as in the last equation. So far we looked at linear regression with a single dependent variable. In a practical scenario, the predicted variable depends on more than one variable. For example in the house price prediction problem, house price may depend on the number of bedrooms, size of the parking lot along with the floor area. This is the more general form of linear regression and referred to as multivariate linear regression. The model in such a case is House price equals M1 times floor area plus M2 times parking area plus M3 times NBHK plus C. What if the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable is not linear? That is, what if the increase in house price is not a constant multiple of the floor area but changes as the floor area increases? Such a non-linear relationship between the variables can be modeled for example using polynomials. House price equals m1 times floor area plus m2 times floor area squared plus c. Is this problem linear? Yes, as long as the variables m1, m2 does not have exponents, or are not multiplied together. y equals m1 times x1 plus m2 times x2 plus c. x1 equals floria, x2 equals floria squared. Vectorization trick is used to solve the problem in the two cases above. All the variables are pooled in a vector, and the inputs are also arranged in a vector. The vector observations are then used to form the correlation matrix and the covariance vector. These are then used to compute the regression vector. 